interested in the flag policy. We will is, be doing flag yes. policy later. If you've got something to say now, or do you want to leave it till well, then? Well, I might leave it till later. I'll let you have a go then. Yes. Darky, mm -hmm. you've always got to be saying. Yeah, I've got some questions on this even money business, Michael. What the hell are you, how is something going up 20 percent? How is something going up 20 percent? Yeah, this band D business. Right. Going up 20 percent? That, yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So that's, does that that's, mean band A is all going up 20%? Everything will be going up by 20%, but we use band B as a representation of what that would be in real terms. Because 20% sounds like a fantastic amount of money. But in reality, it's our, it? Yeah, if you let me finish there, I'll explain why it sounds like a fantastic amount of money. Our share of the council tax entirety is known as the preset. So it's 20% of our preset, not 20% of the total council tax bill. So for somebody in a bandy property without looking at the paperwork, it's about 98p a week. So no, 20% sounds massive, 98p a week, not quite a bit. This would be put out of order altogether. Well, it's just shy of 50 quid a year, darky, yeah. Basically, you're putting everything up because of all the risk management. I would not agree with that assessment. No. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, okay. well, I've got plenty of questions about this money here. All right, well, do you want a couple? Because obviously we've got a very busy evening. I'll give you a couple and then we'll work. Obviously, we can see the main point you're trying to make is you're not happy with a 20% rise in our share of the No, that's just your thing. This is called the sport. This is for a start. <laughs> Where are we going with couple's point? Well, you've got, how much is so far? It says you're uh, 252,000. Couple's point cost. That's what it said. Yeah. And then another 35,000 on top. No, I think we went through this last month, didn't we? There was 15,000 on top of the project overrun, you know, the storms, yada, yada, yada. We, we did this last month. Yeah. And then there is 20% set aside as a contingency. So we've not spent the 35. So far, 15 has been requested by the uh, contractor. So, and they've got to want more? I don't know. That's why it's a contingency built into the into the project. This is what happens with big projects, Archie. We, well, I, I swear to God, we did this dance last month. Yeah, but you, yeah, I didn't have all these figures then. So. Okay. So right. you well, usually on big projects, though. What? On these big projects, there's usually an overrun. If they go beyond their time, they have to pay money back. We have yeah. a project manager here, have we? Have no. Them. And I am not the point. The office. Yeah, so I mean, we, we can provide you with the exact stuff if you want. But oh, I should look at it, yes. Okay, if you come into the office, we will ensure that happens. But obviously, from memory, I cannot go through something that's no. agreed I before I speak to the council. Okay, so, okay, fair enough. Are you happy with that? Silly question. Well, are you happy to leave it there? <laughs> we'll leave it for now because I've got other things that I'm going to get checked up on. Okay, fantastic. Is there anybody else? No, in that case, we will move on. Ah, <clears throat> to receive apologies and accept reasons and non attendance. Yeah, we've had apologies from Councillor Good and Councillor Tay personal reasons. To receive only declarations of interest on items on the agenda. None. Yes, in that case, we're going to receive a presentation from the Viewed Climate Partnership. So, over to you, Rob. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you very much for uh, giving us this time. So, I'm Robert Uli. I'm the Programme Director for the Viewed Climate Partnership, but I'm really here on behalf of the Community Jury, which is a completely separate body. We help to make, make it happen, but they are separate to us. Um, and we have a presentation here. I think we need to. If you make it, yeah, acknowledge it. Well, it doesn't want to do that. Okay. 
So uh, we have a, <coughs> just going to talk to you for about five or ten minutes about um, the short, the um, community jury that was held, um, and then take some questions. You're free to ask any of the jury members questions if you want, if they want to answer them. But I would just say that you'll be getting their own individual uh, interpretation of it. You talk about their own experiences of the jury. Uh, what they think is the recommendation, but of course, none of them individually talking for the jury as a whole. That's within the, the recommendations. Um, I came here, I don't know, about six or eight months ago and talked about how we were doing the jury. So I won't go into too much detail about that. Just to say that we invited everybody who lives in the, in the whole community network area to be part of it. We had lots of responses and um, just over 2%, which is considered a very, very good response. Uh, and from that, we used the process of sortition to select 40 jurors um, who are a mini version of the uh, whole community in terms of demographics, age, gender, ethnicity, disability, housing, tenure, index of deprivation, their attitude to climate change, uh, where they live and how long they've lived here. And between them, the juries, jury members um, spent more than a thousand hours of deliberation, and that was over five uh, five days in September and November. At the end of which, they came out with eleven principles and twenty nine recommendations. And the principles were sort of overriding uh, principles, <laughs> and uh, but but the recommendations were then tested against so that they matched up to all those principles. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we held the launch of the jury's recommendations at the Falcon, and 10 of you came to it, 10 town councillors came to it. You were among the 85 attendees. Thank you very much for coming. And we had several senior figures in attendance, so right up at board level on Cornwall Council, Phil Mason, Vicky Fraser, um, and at a very senior level in the Environment Agency, Ben Johnson. So he's responsible for the whole of the Southwest <laughs> Environment Agency for flood risk and coastal management. Um, and I, we, we, we got some feedback from the Environment Agency, which I asked if we could read out because um, it was a really great testament to what the jury had done. So I'm just going to read this out. Um, now, at the moment, the Environment Agency is also doing its own community juries, like we are citizens juries, um, in the Seven, Humber, Tyne and uh, Thames Estuary. And for each of one, one of those, they're talking to millions of people. And we've been working closely with them. Um, and they've now asked us to join their steering group because of what they've learned from the view process. And this is what they had to say. And they said, not, it's not an overstatement to say this was a groundbreaking event. To have this many people from a rural community gathered in a public space on a cold Monday night in January to talk about sea level rise and to seriously think about the future is really remarkable. Of particular importance was the demographic spread and variation. It's so important to have that multi-generational representation in these types of conversations. But historically, it's been so difficult to achieve when we go out to communities <coughs> to talk about climate change and shoreline planning. So this feels like a real step change. And the Environment Agency has so far done two of those ones with you know millions of people within each catchment and they've got two more to go and they're changing them now as a result of what we've done here in Butte, taking on board some of the lessons that we've learned here. So I come to the recommendations and that's what I'm here for, to ask you to accept the recommendations and to think about them and at the end of this I've got some requests of you. Uh, none of this involves your money, we're not asking for any funding or anything like that. We're just asking for your support. Um, and just to say, this isn't you, Climate Partnership, who are asking. It's the, the jury, the community. Um, so I've broken the recommendations down into different groups. Some of them call on the town council to support using its own assets. So, for example, on page 11 of the recommendations, there's one that asks you to organize an extensive, and this isn't to you, this is to everybody, to organize an extensive awareness camp, uh, awareness raising campaign throughout the wider viewed area. 
Uh, and part of that, they're asking for a permanent exhibition at the castle. And I'll come back to that because there, there might be additional funding that would help that to happen. And they're also asking for notice boards at risk areas like Brooklets and Summerlees, uh, physical markers where predicted, uh, where predicted sea level rise rises will be each year. I think each decade will probably be easier. Um, and displays at places where information is commonly passed between people, school gates, pubs, and so on. And again, we're just asking for your support of this. Um, you know, we, we, we can help make it happen. Um, and there are various other partners that we're working with we could also help make it happen. Um, so moving on to these are recommendations uh, that rely on the council, town council support through the neighbourhood development plan and the creation of a coastal change management area, which is a key part of that. Um, and again, they're not big asks. They're asking you to do things that I think largely are what you want to do anyway, such as um, to support action towards more energy efficient housing and buildings and more environmentally friendly transport options, um, to prioritise natural processes in the response to sea level rise, um, to create a coastal change management area as part of the neighbourhood development plan, um, and to look at alternative future travel solutions for cricklets and summerlies whilst maintaining current car parking capacity. Well, as we, you know, as we know, that area, those areas are threatened anyway. They're either going to be under sand through you know, building additional dunes in order to protect against sea level rise, or they'll be lost to the sea. So these are obvious re uh, requests to which there are answers which we can work, at, uh, work with you with and with the Environment Agency and Cornwall Council, both of whom are very much in support of all these. And then there's some recommendations that um, ask for your support at the North Cornwall Community Area Partnership. So this is mainly uh, about the fact that any commitment to dealing with these problems needs to be long term. It's, it's, it's longer than the, the, the session of a single council, and it, it's about looking at ways in which um, it can, there can be a more long term response. And again, on the, on, within the recommendation, there are several uh, suggestions. Um, and finally, there's some recommendations <laughs> that uh, would be assisted by the Town Council's communications and general support. So one of them on page seven is about asking the local MP to engage with the issues of climate change and sea level rise. All that means is that when you meet with Scott Mann or whoever his successor is, if he isn't successful later this year, that you bring it up and you continue to bring it up and you make, make him aware that it's an important issue for our community. It's of absolute vital importance. Um, there's also a, a one where it's asking for, uh, for uh, progress report meetings on how the recommendations are being taken forward um, every, after six and 12 months. And they're asking just for the local, well, it says local government should provide funding for these meetings. That can be, be through me, just making the either potter hall or another room available, providing tea and coffee, that kind of thing, for community meetings on, on this subject. Um, there's a request that the Town Council and Cornwall Council should put more money and resources towards climate communications. And we're having conversations already with Cornwall Council about that. Um, and then there's one, uh, there's one about asking uh, local people to be supported to have conversations about climate change with each other. Um, and there's mention here of a, a climate cafe, which I believe is already under consideration by groups in the town and, and possibly by the town council. Certainly it's something that we've looked at and we have a project that is all about getting people to talk about climate change. And, and it's asking if the town council could help find the space for this, which might be saying, you know the Willoughby Gallery in the in the castle or something like that. So uh, where are we now? Well, since the meeting on the the launch on the fifteenth of January, um, well, at that launch, among the attendees, more than forty actions were committed, and this was um, the attendees actually volunteering them. They weren't uh, asked specifically. It was in the discussion groups that happened after the main presentation. Um, various representatives from Cornwall Council, the Environment Agency, the National Trust, uh, Town Council, 
and parish councils and other organisations made commitments and we've been following up on those um, and um, been really good. So the progress in includes yourselves uh, agreeing to uh, receive the recommendations hopefully today. Um, then also the Cultural and Heritage Committee of the Town Council receiving recommendations in a week's time. Um, at the end of this uh, at the end of this month, we are having the first meeting of a group to support some of these dunes. This is about sort of hands-on action, um, various different uh, aspects of how we can take. There's already a dune management plan. How we can put it into action, um, and that's for that we're working with Cornwall Wildlife Trust and uh, with Cornwall Council through the Making Space for Sand project and any other organisations in the area who want to be part of that. Um, there's a bid going in on Monday um, with some people we've been working with at Exeter University going into policy at Exeter, that's the Policy Engagement Centre at Exeter, and what they do is help organisations such as us take recommendations like this and get people to act upon them. So how do we get our MP to respond to it? How do we get um, uh, uh, you know, other organisations to respond to it? And there's also a um, bid that's pending. We've been asked by Bristol University to be part of a four million pound project that they're running, which is uh, all about uh, respond, how communities respond to sea level rise, also looking at how it affects tourism. Um, if we're successful in that, we'll be one of four communities in Cornwall, us, Falmouth, Truro, uh, and the Isles of Scilly, that they'll be doing this work with about. And through that, funding would become available for a permanent exhibition. Um, they've got lots of other different uh, initiatives within that. Um, and just yesterday, uh, the mayor uh, facilitated a meeting with the town team. Now, we realise that you're, there's lots of external organisations such as ours and the town team who are coming to you and saying, oh, you know, could we do this, could we do that, could we have your support for this particular initiative or your backing for that particular idea. And the really, what we wanted to do was to ensure that we come to you with a kind of coherent vision for viewed rather than it being, oh, wait a minute, this one's come from Youth Climate Partnership, wasn't there something from town team that was kind of similar or different. So um, that's to work collaboratively with them. I know that the council is currently in a period of reflection about um, how to work with the town team and, um, you know, take all that on board. But uh, I think, you know, there's, that they very much accept all our recommendations and their recommendations will thread through all their proposals. And um, out of their 15 projects, I don't think there's anyone that doesn't uh, uh, reflect uh, what our ambitions are or rather what the jury's ambitions are and then we've got some various commitments uh, from various different people at, uh, so we've got sort of a board level of Cornwall Council there um, you know wanting to incorporate the recommendations into their process of developing new local plans yeah. for, um, for, for right across Cornwall um, and also um, we're talking to the head of communications about messaging um, right here, but also right across Cornwall on sea level rise. Um, and the Environment Agency is taking in the jury's principles to inform its work. Um, and then there's various parish councillors who are taking their work back to the other uh, the other communities in the Butte Community Network area. And there's also some work with uh, the National Trust, with the farming community and other landowners. So next steps. This is really what we the jury is coming to you to ask for. Um, the first thing is, will the town council agree to holding an extraordinary full council to discuss the recommendations more fully within the next three months? There's 29 recommendations, 11 principles, much more. I'm, I'm still working my way through them and becoming really familiar with them. There's much more than, uh, takes much more time than just a single meeting and a half hour slot to uh, give this any real proper consideration. So when you've had time to digest it, would you hold an extraordinary full council? If you wish, the jury members can come along and uh, be part of that. Um, and would the town council receive the recommendations from Bude Haven's mini jury? And this was 
it followed the exact same process as we did in the main jury. It was slightly smaller. It was three days rather than five days. But they come out with their own recommendations, some which are great, I must say, some of which are uh, to do with the whole community and how young people, uh, their stake in the, in, in, in the future of this community. Some of them are to do with things to do within school. And then finally, we have had a lot of people saying, you know, when can the community talk about these recommendations and their impacts upon youth and how viewed response to sea level rise and, and, and other uh, aspects of climate change. And so uh, we'd like to hold a town hall style meeting facilitated by a group such as Shared Future with whom we work on. They're experts in this to help make it, um, to help run the process. And that will be open to anybody in the, the community. And we're just asking for your support and that, that you come along to it and that you're there. Um, but it's a big open meeting. Uh, don't quite know what form it would take, whether it would be a day or an evening or what. Thank you very much. Is there anybody on the jury who'd like to say anything? More question of being here to answer your questions. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, we've done half the mayor's report for me already. <laughs> I'm going to mention the fact that I attended a few climate climate meetings, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I obviously asked the questions I wanted to yeah. then, and as I think pointed out, follow through on one of my statements yeah. already. So, has anybody got any questions? Kevin? Um, when this was mooted, I had some reservations about the process, which, as per me, my usual style, I was vocal in raising, and I think this report is 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 excellent. And I think the recommendations that the climate jury has come up with are are exceptionally good set of recommendations. However, I am somewhat minded of a planning system whereby we make some marvelous local plans and we have some marvelous outline planning permissions and, and all kinds of great schemes done in rooms like this. And then when the bulldozers are moving, everybody goes, oh, I didn't know they were going to do that. I'm not, I'm not in favour of that. That's terrible. So my only point of reservation is to say that the climate jury is the community. Um, it's not. It is of the community. It is not the community. And this is a major thing. This is the biggest thing on the agenda, barring potential war with Russia or whatever. And getting this out into the full community, getting buy-in from sections of the community that wouldn't be bothered to come along to the far past central on a Tuesday night and listen to people talk. Getting that level of buy-in across a much, much broader range of the community and a much greater number of people is, is going to be the challenge. And I think that's no small challenge. But I, I applaud the, uh, the work of the, of the climate jury and I hope we agree to endorse it. Anybody else? Um, well, this is probably my kind of ignorance really but um, my understanding is that there's been another tranche of funding yeah. that's come through because of the climate jury and that's brilliant yeah thank you very much for getting that funding sorted out what's the what's the kind of situation what what does that actually cover that funding and how's that going to be kind of managed Do you know? so so that's it's it's three million pounds and it's called c so these always have acronyms ctap coastal transition Accelerator program is what it stands for, which doesn't even <laughs> doesn't explain it any better. Um, so the Environment Agency applied for it. Um, they they were able to apply for it because we were doing this because it, it in order to qualify for it, you had to have community already engaged with this issue. And um, now it is Cornwall Council are working on a business plan for it, and there are it's. This is a pilot scheme. This is the first time it's ever been given to 
anywhere in the southwest. The only other two communities that have received it, one was in Yorkshire, one was in Norfolk. And um, so there's quite a lot of flexibility about how it's used. They want to learn lessons so that this can become a model for other communities. But there are three main areas that are suggested. One is to look at what you can do with existing infrastructure in terms of do you fortify it? Do you move it? Do you replace it? What do you do with, and when, when I say infrastructure, these are key community assets, kind of things that we know that are on the, the shoreline that uh, the community really, really values and that we want to ensure we've got for the future. The second part of it is to look at the use of land around the shoreline, you know, how it's going to change, but also if you're going to be moving things or changing things, um, you know, so if you move the surf club or if you move the lifeboat station or if you move the sea pool, where are you going to move it to and what you, how are you going to do that? And then the third part of it is about um, ensuring biodiversity, creating green borders around particular areas where you say, right, we're, we're not going to allow any kind of development on that area. It's protected, looking about how we will do that. And part of that is... It, the, the, the whole program has to be informed by the community. Um, so uh, the officer that we're talking to, uh, who's been working with us closely on this and on, and on the jury um, during the whole process, um, you know, is, is, talk, is wanting to hold another jury session to look into these issues in more depth and to have wider consultation as well. So that's where we are on that. Yeah. Yeah, so my point was going to kind of rip off Kevin's point about the jury being of the community and about kind of broadening this. So Rob presented like three recommendations that we kind of think about aspiring to accept. And I think the only way forward is to actually lean into those. The first one being having an extraordinary full council meeting, specifically about recommendations. The second one being receiving the climate jury, the youth climate jury, and the third one being about helping to facilitate community meeting that's kind of, you said, maybe shared future or another um, facilitating overarching group do that. But I think we can't really sit here and just receive this and be like, oh, thank you very much, that was lovely. Like, we actually need to say, like, and like to propose that we could do that like as soon as possible um i don't know how to word that but yeah rather than just being like this is great <coughs> where do we go next like that's actually like you know that's actually resolved to do those things if we can i know we're only receiving a presentation but yeah it will just go on the shelf otherwise won't it so maybe we should action some of those recommendations right now that's good Yes, I'm very positive action. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just a bunch of people sitting around talking about stuff. Right, yeah. can we <coughs> condense that down into a saying? No, <laughs> disrespecting what you just said, but can we condense it down into a saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just so we're clear on what we're going to vote on. Like the three things that were recommended in the presentation. Yeah. Like those are results in hold a capital council meeting to discuss the climate jury recommendations, to receive the Bude Haven School jury recommendations, and to agree to arrange a whole a, a meeting for the wider community. Well, to help to facilitate was what yeah. As well as to do all working. three of those things within three months. Was hold the extraordinary meeting in the month. extraordinary meeting one. Because obviously, it was in three without months. looking at our meeting schedule, we could be committing to things that we might not be able to deliver at a time scale. But other than that, I don't see too much of an issue with it. It's been seconded anyway. I'm just wary that we'll commit to do something that we can actually well, do. I don't think about. the it depends entirely on what the community jury and the plan partnership think about that. Like more open meeting but if that's a summer thing or later in the year then obviously that i don't know but the the full council meeting the full council meeting within three months um, in three months the other two within six months a reasonable extension of the future yeah 
the other second did yeah you had your hand up before you I just, I just thought while Tracy was typing or whatever I'd just like to thank jury members for all the work they've put into it I think it's a and booth like partnership I think it's a fantastic initiative the the process when it came up I just thought was really inspiring and it's just an impressive piece of work so thank you and I'd, I'd, I personally would love to support the recommendations and I think those next steps are just just perfect because it's, it's just let's just see what the next bit is you know? I think it's been seconded so we'll vote on it but you also had your hand up before it's seconded if you want to speak or well, no, 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 just, just like thoroughly enjoyed eating down there. Right, so, in that case, does everybody understand what we're about to vote on? Good. All in favour? <coughs> I think a few unanimous. Against? Abstain? So, it was unanimous in that case. Thank you very much for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> um, you are most welcome to sit through the rest of this meeting. <laughs> it will be thoroughly interesting. <laughs> but I will pause if anybody wants to speak out the door now. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. We don't very well. We're not very good at sleep. <laughs> <laughs> attended the town team working group meeting this month to discuss the future governance of the county. Effectively, there's two documents in front of them alongside the one that came out of our CMD committee, which is to be considered as two. The working group effectively resolved that both documents would go in front of the full town team who will discuss, debate, whatever, and then vote on the, the way they want to go, the document of governance which will then be presented to us for discussion and endorsement or not. And that is effectively the meeting condensed into 90 seconds. So other than that, that's the end of the mayor's report. Board councillors. Thank you. There you go. So, so with your indulgence, I'll, I'll do it as quick as I can. Well, right, but yeah. what I try to do is just give you a flavour of what we've been working on since the last meeting, which is obviously only two and a half weeks. Yeah, you can beat my time. Yeah, no, I won't. <laughs> uh, right, so um, funding from Cornwall Council for the Astra Turf Lighting for the whole club and the other clubs, especially the clubs that use that area, has been slower than I'd hoped, but I've been sure that it's going to go through in the next couple of weeks. So we'll have lighting uh, probably in place now for next season, and I think we missed this season. Um, a lot of you might have noticed um, that there's been quite a lot of earth moved at the golf club. Um, I know we've expressed concerns about that at the uh, planning committee. Um, I've been in touch with the golf club and asked for a guided tour of what they're doing, and they've agreed to do that, which is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So I'll report back to you all when, uh, when I've got more idea of exactly what's going on. Um, also, I attended last night, I won't do this in the other section, I'll do it in this section, uh, viewed community CCTV group, along with Mr. Jewell in our audience, uh, they've kindly offered uh, to fit a camera which looks directly onto the job centre toilets, which we've recently mm -hmm. had damaged. 
Um, so they're hoping that they might be able to help us through some of the problems we've been having there recently. I think it's something they can do readily because they've got a pole which they can attach a camera which looks directly into that. And they've said that they would use funding that we've provided with them or provided to them recently uh, to fund that particular camera. So that's a nice little bit of good news for us. Um, Connect viewed. I have a meeting with them and Councillor William Kez, former councillor who's the portfolio holder, um, to address some of the issues and to elevate some of the transport issues, particularly around access to healthcare for the basketball. And that's upcoming at the end of next week. Uh, also met with Kavanagh Homes uh, to represent local concerns about the missing millstone. Um, which we've identified where it is, and we've identified a spot where they'll put it, and they've agreed to put interpretation on it as well. Um, some of you might be interested to know that in the Second World War, it was allegedly a cut-off point where the black American soldiers were allowed to venture no further towards Butte. But uh, <laughs> anyone who went to Butte Haven Community School, like Councillor Moores and myself, there might be others in this audience that did. So it uh, was featured on one cross-country running route, uh, where Mr. Open used to shout, Get on with it when we were doing it. Anyway, I've also had requests for a pedestrian crossing in Stratton. I know this has happened several times before, but it seems much more likely that we're going to get one um, in the shorter term now because it was felt that the traffic in Stratton was moving too fast or inappropriately close to corners for a pedestrian crossing. But when the traffic limit comes down to 20 miles an hour, that becomes feasible to put crossings in. Um, I've also had um, the advice that Rod's Bridge is going to be replaced with a like-for-like -like bridge, which I'm rather disappointed with because we'd hoped that it was going to be either a swing bridge or a bridge high enough to allow uh, traffic to go underneath it and make the waterway navigable. Uh, but it's looking like a like-for-like. -like. They are going to raise it very slightly, but not sufficient for what I think the Canal and Harbour Society would have preferred. Uh, dredging, I can report to you, is slow. Um, although I spoke to the former of the works, I think it was about 10 days ago now, he felt that he should be able to catch up, but they've had challenges in terms of, I think, the, I'm not sure if viscosity is the right word, but the dredgings have been thicker than they thought they were going to be, or more sludgy. Uh, we've got a new council officer who's dealing with uh, the reinforcement of the canal bank going down towards the lock gates. Um, last time we Post a treatment there to reinforce the bank, it had to include effectively concreting over the last of the visible tramway rails. Uh, we had a lot of negative feedback from the community on that, so they're going to try and come up with a different treatment. And finally, I've had complaints from residents of St Anne's Hill about the POM emanating from Hillbridge treatment plant, which has been ongoing for several years. If anybody else has had complaints or experiences with that, please let me know. That is my report. I've got one question. I've contacted this week to reference the Astro Tower. And apparently, all sports have been cancelled there from darkness onwards now because they literally have no light. Do you know whether that is true? I don't know whether it's true, but what I can say is I was told the last working light had failed. That would be Yeah, all right. Thank you. Okay, Sean. Peter, up where I live, or just down from where I live. There have been potential houses empty for weeks. One woman was living in one, she died of the year October. The bloody place is still empty. And the other one, she cleared, <laughs> she cleared off the land scene. And that's it, people. There's local people need homes. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take to call council so long to stop the thing here? I, I don't like a house being unoccupied for one hour. No, I don't. No, right, no. right, but the council has to adhere to what we call decent home standards, so they have to be inspected um, throughout. They have to be checked for mould, and they have to have <coughs> kitchens and facilities in. And I, the council struggles sometimes to have the amount of people working to move in and do all those checks. But if you give me the addresses, I can follow up on the individual ones. But I am aware that the voids are not reoccupied as quick as a lot of councils. It's all that slope going up to the the um. A shelter. What road? Well, I wouldn't call it Trillium Road, but I think it's buried happily, wouldn't it? Thank you, sorry, the road you're on, wouldn't it? Yeah. I just close it. Well, no, it's, it's, it's on the actual road. It's not there on, you know, it's the first house going up then where the play park is, the first place past there. If I write buried happily, I'll check. And there's the next one, the top two up or three up from there. Trillium Road's got a bad car kick. Yeah, well. Yeah, I've got to Trevor up. You lived there nearly 40 years. 
Yeah, but the bus people would call it Berry's Avenue. Well, no, the bus the people one flag that they'd given him, guess what? It went to some banner from Yuki. Again. Do you know how much their council tax are, Ducky? 27%. There you go. Yeah. And they're still sent to the end. They're <laughs> even more cynical. That's really saying something. But I mean, okay. once again, are these places going to go to you people? Are not a chance, is there? Well, the allocations are made according to very tightly written allocation procedures. And one of the things that I don't particularly like is that if you're in an urban environment, when a council house becomes available, anyone in Cornwall can apply. Mm. Right, and then they're triaged according to need. So the most needy person in Cornwall could apply for that. If you're in a village, they require village credentials. So you, you, if you live in a village, you're much more likely to get a council her house nearer to home. But I don't like it. When it's from Cornwall the district council, it was local, you had a local connection, didn't you? Well, well you still do. Well, how the hell she got it in from Newquay? Because she lives in Cornwall. <laughs> yeah, well, that didn't have it in North Cornwall, was it? It was going to be a connection to North Cornwall. No, I, I, I know it wasn't on the Council in North Cornwall District Council over the break. I don't know. All right, I think, I think you've got the reasonable answer, Darkie. All right. No. No. We're moving on. I look good. Ah, right, minutes. Call Council to approve the minutes of the previous meeting, the 11th of January 2024. I propose that we do that. We'll be all in favour? No, great. Uh, planning committee, 10th of January 2024. I'll second it. All in favour? Against? Abstain? Okay, that went through. Um, facilities and Environmental Services Committee, 25th of January 2024. Proposed? All in favour? <laughs> Oh, I'll put this one out on the back of that. Thank you. Against? Abstain? I don't know. And Portland Democratic Services, 18th of January 2024. What is that? I'll second it. All in favour? Against? <coughs> Abstain? Uh, recommendations contained in CD 005 Q4 that the full council adopt the flex policy as presented with the addition to principle that any group organization can apply a flag from any one flagpole and may, under extenuating circumstances, apply for further flags to be chosen from more than one flagpole. Any such request should be agreed by the full council. Now, We've got a few members of the RB earlier. Steve, I believe you've got a statement from some of Craig. Yeah. You've got what? From Craig, yeah. From, from Craig, yeah. So I've got um, a few of us met Craig. Chief Petty Officer Hewitt, yeah. known as Chewy. Yeah. He's the um, a gay serviceman in the Royal Navy, first gay person to be married in the Royal Navy. So he, he kind of bridges that gap between what is the LGBT community and the military, so you know, it's a perspective that we struggle to understand. So I, I think I'm going to give you the floor, Steve, and then. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councillor. Uh, apologies for my time. I said transport available. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so I was made aware of this last year, and unfortunately, we had some sort of unhelpful um, intervention by a uh, hate counts, uh, whereas um, it had been left to Mark and I. Uh, we would have arranged the same meeting as we arranged previously to, to help educate uh, and highlight that it isn't actually a problem with the veterans uh, having a problem with tried education. They're just trying to, I don't think they know how to put over um, how important um, the monument and union flag is uh, when they've served in theatre and they've lost uh, friends and colleagues. I think that's why it was important that we had that we were lucky enough to have that meeting um, and I purposely brought Craig uh, into the meeting uh, because of his background, because of uh, how much he does in the southwest uh, with the gay community uh, and it was important to get his perspective uh, given to the council that is present rather than someone that isn't gay trying to put over someone else's view if that makes sense. Uh, so I think he did that quite successfully and we're very grateful that you've allowed us to come back tonight. Uh, unfortunately, last week, Craig's hus husband was in hospital, so he couldn't make the meeting. Uh, and he's due in London around 7 o'clock, half 7 tonight, and sends his apologies. 
but I asked him if he could write me a little something to say to uh, councillors here, um, just so we can get flavour of the my shades. Um, I'd like to apologise for not being able to attend today due to family commitments in London. This matter has really upset me that members of the LBG, LGBTQ plus community uh, can react like this without the understanding of the military. And obviously that was what he explained um, to you when he was down. As a gay man within the Royal Navy, the first to be married on a military base, remembrance, armed forces day, military uh, events mean a lot to me. Uh, the one designated military flag is key to our community. Uh, I've lost three friends due to conflict and two have been gay men. Um, they would have turned in their graves if they had had the pride flag on their coffins. The Union flag represents a fully inclusive world. Forget in the past, this is the now uh, that we live in, a mod flag being raised isn't the end of the world. My honest opinion as a gay man in the military is to have one flagpole designated as a military flagpole and the rest left free for the council. If this isn't agreed, then I strongly recommend that on Armed Forces Day, one flag is dropped, uh, as in the pride flag, uh, and removed to the Union flag raised. One out of 30 days isn't hardship when three are still flying. Uh, it just, but I was willing to come down to the meeting, but the changes, because of the change you couldn't attend today, uh, I'm more than happy to be, uh, to be called and speak over the phone or speaker if this will help the situation. Um, so that, that's Craig's view, and um, as a veteran myself um, from theatre, um, I come from a, um, a minority background, and if it was Black History Month or Black Lives Matter, and they had a flag, I would be fighting uh, for the Union flag to be over uh, on its own. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. That's, yeah, I mean, that's boiled down a bit. I mean, three of us technically in this is very useful. And as I introduced this, I said that we struggle to sort of bridge the gap between, you know, the two groups. I'm ex military. I've tried to explain the importance of the flag for the military community and that. Obviously, I'm a straight man. I tried to explain to councillors in meetings, I tried to explain to the pub that every service person that I ever knew, some of them were gay, it didn't matter. You don't live that closely together with people without knowing whether they tell you or not. Every single one of us was represented by that British flag. There was never any call for us to be separated. You know, if any one of us died in theatre, you got wrapped in that flag. You didn't go, oh, Joe's Scotch, get a Scotch one out, or Joey's gay, get the, get the open. Bang, that flag. So Steve and Chewy have summed it up what I've tried to explain for a couple of years far better than I managed. So hopefully we can all you know sort of take that on board. And you know, I we went through a lot last year, you know, me personally and us as a council, and we want to try and avoid that. And I, my, my personal thoughts were, you know, we, we've kind of got this policy where we're going to put the pride flag up on Shelby Hill in June and then take it down for a day and put it back up and then take it down a couple of weeks later. That's exactly what we did last year. Ignore the protests. Let's say they won't happen this year. In a following full council meeting, I think, I think it was Sean brought a proposal forward that we initially that be based on taking that flag down and then putting it back up we issued a full public apology for doing so so to repeat that would to my mind say to those people we've learned nothing we've said sorry and we've learned nothing um we've just heard you know from craig that his preference would be for that to be the british flag on that poll alone or St. Karen on Hangoff Day, whatever it may be. So I believe, I think it was Peter's proposal or recommendation, which I, I did second, that any community group could apply to have one flag or one poll. But you know, I, I think that's probably the most sensible way to go. We treat every group equally and we treat each, each request on its own merit and make a decision. I'll stop talking, Katie. I just wanted to say, as a member of the LGBT community, sorry, I struggled to get one of those. That's all right, so much. <laughs> I've said it before, but I just wanted to say again that the views of U Pride Education were not the views of the general LGBT community that I know. Yeah. 
from my perspective, the rainbow flag was was a necessity because we, you know, there was a time when we didn't feel like we were part of any community. We needed to create our own community. We needed our own flag. But personally, I want there to be a time when we don't need to put that rainbow flag up because that union flag is for everyone. And we should all be welcome here, no matter what our race, no matter our skin color, no matter our sexuality, it makes no difference. And for, to be a part of this community, I am super proud to be a part of you. I'm super proud to be a part of this community. And I, you know, I was, I, I was upset about what happened because I think that there needs to be better understanding, you know, from, from everyone probably. I think not enough people understand the military and what they, what people go through, regardless of what we see on the television or what we read about, it's not ever going to be enough. And the same with being gay, you know, 50, 60 years ago being gay, no one can understand that unless you live through it. So I think there needs to be more understanding in general. But one day I hope that we won't need a rainbow flag and we'll all just be under the union flag. So I just think we'll we'll add that. Yeah, <laughs> Then I've got Kevin and then Chris. I did say I'd give you a chance yeah, to speak to so Master Kevin. Okay. Well, I uh, fully endorse what you said, I fully endorse what Katie said, and I fully endorse what the gentleman up. Sorry, whose name I've already forgotten. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, I've just had yeah, yeah, talked to I fully endorse everything you said, everything the mayor has said, everything Councillor uh, whose name I want to try and pronounce, uh, Katie down here. Uh, said, um, my own background is I, I've an uh, out and out liberal, um, possibly even a pacifist, which shouldn't be uh, mistaken with a fascist, but a, a pacifist. And um, I, I, I don't, so I don't have any agenda whatsoever. But for me, the, the, you know, respecting the obviously military, but also the, you know, history, tradition, culture. Everything um, put to me, Shoulder Hill, the flag was sent here for the Union flag when appropriate. And last year, what happened last year was unfortunate, but um, uh, can I just remind that I was the only councillor who voted against the apology because councillors voted for a protocol, which meant that the pride flag would be taken down. On a certain day, staff went out, did what, what they were effectively told to do by this council. And to me, it was disrespectful to the staff that we then apologized for doing what we, we said. Well, actually, I wasn't on the council then, but the, the councillors were, we had to apologize for doing something that we said we would do. So for me, as the, the, the shoulder hill, bottom flags, wherever else, fine, don't have any issues, but shoulder hill, flags in peril, or the union flag when appropriate, is as, as a liberal, that's what I think it should, it should be. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, we've got a photo on that. <laughs> Can I? Yeah. 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 Uh, Kevin. Um, not all that long ago, we were discussing this in the committee. And I said that I thought what we did last year was right. I thought it was right that we put the uh, rainbow flag up for Pride Month. And it was right that we took it down again for certain days of importance to the military and had the union flag flying alone on the flagpole. And I still believe that as a point of principle, that's right. And I also believe that it is a unfortunate precedent if we don't see the pride flag flying from shoulder hill this coming june but as pete says it's an however moment because although i think we were right in principle last year this council this town the the mayor um collateral damage to the mayor's family it was a mess 
and it is potentially going to be a mess again if we do the hokey pokey with the flags. And although the principle might be sound, seeing somebody's flag go up and then seeing this flag come down to be replaced by another flag, that is potentially, in my view, probably worse than not flying the flag from that flag at all. So, so I will change from what I said at the CFD um, and endorse the, uh, the recommendation from that committee for one flag <coughs> from one uh, one flag per organisation, one flag pole per organisation. But I think we should make it a little bit stronger in the wording to emphasise that the council will decide from the flag pole. So. It will not be for an organization to request Shoulder Hill. It will be for an organization to request the flag, and then the council will decide and delegate the decision by officers as to which flag for. Because otherwise, we risk potentially having the same problem again because an organization will request Shoulder Hill and we'll be left with nothing but a binary choice of yes or no. Whereas if we can delegate or designate a flag for, then we could say, yeah, you can have your flag, it just happens to be from the council of the Thanks, thanks. Right, I think Chris has said no, then Pika, and then, then Sean, and then Pika. Chris. Thank you. <clears throat> um, uh, in general, I, su I support the recommendation, but I would like just to put into context what my experience has been during my life. In, on the 8th of October 1962, I joined the Corbett Stab Cadets. And on the 1st of October 1996, I resigned from the Devon Corbett Constabulary. And if you can imagine, and I can recall, the purpose of the police is to enforce the law. And some of the heinous laws that existed during that period of time that I ex that, that I know about were actually horrendous, horrendous. So what what you want to do? Um, I support our, our armed forces, probably the best in the world, or maybe they should be the best in the world. Uh, but I have absolute respect for anybody that's had anything to do with them um, in any way or capacity. So. You're right in doing this, and um, I hope that's what the vote will be, because it should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I wasn't going to say this, <laughs> but I will, because Steve, you've triggered me into saying it. Um, I, I have felt that given the proximity to our war memorial that that flag pole is, that it, there is a, a synergy and a link between the two. And I, and I have wondered in my mind whether or not that flag ball ought to be dedicated as a military flag ball. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm interested to hear what the rest of this council thinks about that, because I think that's the way that I personally think it probably ought to be. What that does do then is it triggers a problem, because we then have the other organisations, yeah, such as Prime, which we have accommodated before by flying their flag from that flag ball. Um, and I suppose one of the solutions could be an additional flagpole somewhere uh, with as much exposure that it becomes a, a sort of a community flagpole rather than a military flagpole. Um, another uncomplicating stuff, and I know this is not <laughs> what we've talked about previously, but it's what I have thought. And now that Steve has said it, I just wonder the appetite around this table would be for that principle. Um, <laughs> I, I know that we have spent hours and hours and hours and hours on this. I don't regret any of those hours because I think this is so important. We need to talk about it. We need to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for sharing. Really. Yeah. Um, I found the meeting that we had like personally really helpful. So understanding like a perspective that I think I was quite good too at the time and yeah I just want to say thank you for that meeting because it was really really useful. Um, another thing I would like to say is that I'd really love to see the Elizabeth mast being 
put back into this document because at the moment that's not in this document. So what we're kind of moving towards is potentially having the pride flag flying in June from only two masts because in the document there's only three masts explicitly stated. So when we initially started the aspiration to fly the pride flag for pride month in June, it was resolved unanimously that we fly from all four of our council flag poles for the month of June. Um, and we've kept that resolution the last few years. Obviously, we've taken the flag down. We have offended people in the process. We've apologised for the offence caused because I do think that was the right thing to do. If you step on someone's toe, even unintentionally, you say sorry. So I think that was right that we apologised for the offence that was caused unintentionally. And I feel like as a council now, we're in a much better place in terms of understanding um, and having a broader and more sensitive view, I think, from all perspectives, because that has been massively lacking from, from my view previously. We've not always had the most sensitive discussions. So yeah, I'd just like to propose that we additionally amend this document to include the Elizabeth Mast um, in our kind of right. flag flying um, aspirations to align it with what we have been doing for the past three years, because otherwise we are taking that step potentially. So. <laughs> so I'm a little confused here. So we're voting to allow us an organization one flag for poll. Why are we not going to three? So okay. in the document, mm -hmm. there is like very clearly in the document it says about which flags would be fine on what days. Within that wasn't the, the recommendation thing. from C and G as I understood it. Okay. So you're saying from now on, only one flagpole for anything, disrespective of the, the document which we've all read. Because it, it says in that document about the flying. Uh, well, Peter made the proposal when I seconded it. My understanding was that it was one organisation. I've read it out. Any group or organization can request to fly a flag from any one flagpole and may, under extenuating circumstances, apply for a further flag to be flown from more than one flagpole. So, so that's the, like that's an insert into the policy. But as the policy stands, which is the document which we've seen, it still mentions the flag that flying. Wasn't what I understood. Okay. I was seconding I one flagpole her organization with going forward absolutely on board with that but i feel like if we've got a so, three year standing resolution to fly the pride flag on four poles and we're potentially talking about well there's discussions about potentially that only being three flag poles but the elizabeth mast isn't mentioned in that document that doesn't even align with our current current policy so I think it's really important that we at least start with where our current policy well, stands. If, if, if I'm going to vote for one organisation to have one flagpole, they're going to have one flagpole unless I've misunderstood what I'm saying and what I'm voting on. <clears throat> um, there does seem to be some genuine confusion here. Why are people thinking we're talking about three? Well, can I? I'm, I'm genuinely. What you've got is a document which is the flying flag protocol document within red at the start uh, a statement which uh, is, is is basically in red at the start the statement is as I think Peter's uh, proposal uh, but, this, but the document itself which is what we're asking to uh, approve has on page three, on page five, the days on which certain flags will be flown in view in 2024, and that is settled. And it says for June, for Pride, during Pride Month, the Town Council will, will apply appropriate flags from its flagpoles at Sugar Hill, the Parkhouse Centre, and the Castle. So the question is, is there some particular reason why Elizabeth Mask has been taken out of that? That's Having the Allied flags flown this was about 60 of them for the entirety of June for the 80th anniversary of D-Day was my understanding of it. Mm -hmm. Don't know whether we're sticking the Russian one up because they were an ally at the time, but it might be controversial now. 
Um, in fact, no, they were the USSR. We'll probably get around that. But yes, it, was the Soviet Union. it was the Soviet Union back then. I'm not in my own country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but as my understanding is, and obviously we call it flag pole, but it is actually a mass, and it is they need to get cherry picker up there to put the flags up. I'm told at the time, aren't they? They they have great difficulty doing it. So changing them on a daily basis is probably the goal was raising the precept to 21%. <laughs> but well, I mean that's, that's, that is the contradictions within that that's already gone from three. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'll the people once again, but the, it, I think it has to be remembered that you know this is a recommendation from CMD, it's not a set of we, we can change it, yeah. Change. yeah. So we that, that's what well, that's what I'm trying to work out is because I left C and D believing that we had recommended that each organization gets one five volt mm -hmm. and the, and you proposed it, I second did it. Well, I'm, I'm suggesting that maybe the flag policy being presented isn't what was voted to be recommended by me and Peter. <laughs> well, my understanding is that the one flag pole per organization would effectively be an amendment to the policy. So that would that would alter that would alter the policy. So what we have is, is two things. We have the policy as as written by Ian. Um, which does include this business of of not having the pride flag at the Elizabeth Mass because of the D Day commemorations. That, that's just a matter of practicalities. But if the CMD amendment goes ahead, that then amends the policy and you know dramatically simplifies and changes it. Yeah, my understanding was that our recommendation would change that policy to one flag per organization. At the request of the organization on a poll of our choosing. Um, sorry, Peter, you've been waiting a while, so I'll come in and then I'll go to Simon. I mean, given that the previous decision was made over six months ago, as it's been said, it'd just be a, it's be updating that policy. Yeah. So it's, it's not a problem. You know, what I think would be a good thing would be just for the, during the higher period. For example, R and I, like behind the Castle Grounds during my holiday weekend, they'd be allowed to fly their flag on the Castle Grounds flagpole during their holiday period, and then it comes down when it's finished. Uh, if, uh, for example, the RSPB hires the Parkhead Centre, they can put the flag up here by the Parkhead Centre, not for the castle. You know. mm -hmm. So wherever they're hiring the, the ground, it would be erected or be allowed to be erected without a council decision. It's just, it's just so bureaucratic. I think that we've got to sit around and agree to put a flag up, you know. Um, if it was just simplified, uh, and the recommendation as it's written that the full council adopts, or in essence, we stop it, adopts the flag policy as presented with additional principle that any group organization can request to fly a flag from any one flag pole whilst hiring the council grounds to stroke Parkhouse Centre, um, you know, for the duration of that hiring period. And then the other polls or, or masts, if you like, are just purely for the council to decide what goes up on those, whether it's a union flag in Shoulder Hill, St. Perrin's flag, or the array of flags that are going to be mentioned out there this June for the D Day celebrations. That's the, the council's polls. Yeah, I think the, the local dignitaries one, like we did, yeah. the fire brigade flag, when, um, yeah, so and so on. Exactly. Uh, Chuckles, uh, one of the family members of the South Club has died recently. I think they, their family have requested the same pair of the house mass. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fine. Okay. The, the, two, the two ones that are on the hiring, you know, potential hiring places like the Parker Centre and the Castle, they're the ones that can be used by the organisation, but the other two are just the council. Yeah. They don't get any time at all. Uh, I think Simon and uh, Vicky. Thanks. Um, cool. Uh, so, I think we as we said, spent hours on this over the last couple of years. From my point of view, there's been this kind of slight um, dis misunderstanding, I guess, dif difference of opinion around the nature of that flagpole. So the proximity to the War Memorial, absolutely. It's also the one of the most the most visible, visible flagpole in, in town. I can totally see a kind of, you know, a share um, a renewed perspective on on how that flag the union flag is viewed 
biomilitary community. Um, and, and yet there are a large part of the community who, who, who don't see that connection, but see the proximity. So one, I think I'm getting at is, um, there probably does need to be a discussion around, do we dedicate that, do we, do we make that association between the flag pole and the, and the more and more, more formal? Um, and, but I think to do, I don't think tonight is the right time to do that. I think that that should, that requires a bit more consultation and um, communication with the wider community to get that right and to make sure everyone understands if that's what happens, that that's what, that's what happens and why. Um, and then a personal view, I think, even if that were to be the case, that it was you know, formally associated with the war memorial, it would still be a tremendous gift from that community to share that kind of goal, um, to show at other times, you know, those kind of um, gestures of solidarity with the, with the LGBTQ community or with um, ex-fire you know, fire, um, officers or, or whoever, important people in the community. But at least then, if we've done that consultation right, it would be for the, for the community, the military community to, to make that gift. Um, but as I said, I think possibly that's not one for tonight. We, we have debated this for many hours. It will stand a few hours or more to get that right, but to get it right in a way that we bring the community, the whole community, with us. Can I just say, that meeting we had with Craig and everything was absolutely lovely and brilliant. Um, a lot of my friends are LGBTQ+, plus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I feel a way out of this dilemma would be if we made Shoulder Hill Category A. We are not saying it's military. We're not saying this, that, or the other. But there are certain flags that can only be flown from a Category A flagpole. When this whole flagpole policy was originally started, I didn't give as much thought as perhaps I should have done. And if we made category A, we are not saying it's military, we're not saying it's this, but I have raised this as well, like, like Peter, about possibly thinking about a community flagpole. He didn't like the idea at all. Because <laughs> my suggestion was for the triangle as a community flagpole. Okay. Um, John? Yeah, right, briefly, can I just make one point? Uh, and, uh, I don't see the shoulder hill as specifically military. I don't see this, that that should be interpreted as military, especially. It's about remembrance. It is a war memorial. It views war memorial. And so I, I, I think it needs to be viewed in that context. It's, it's remembrance, not net. It certainly is, it shouldn't be viewed as you know, glorifying on it. It yeah. is it is solely remembrance. And I see. Um I'm just getting a little confused. No, I think, um, I, there are three things that I want to say. Okay. Okay. The, the first thing I need clarification if what people are clear about what they're voting on, because as it stands, um, I think that I could support Peter's amendment. I think that's perfectly sensible as part of this document. I don't want anybody thinking that Peter's amendment undermines things that are in the document. Just want to be clear that in the document at present, it says that in June, pride flags will fly from multiple flag poles. Now, are we saying that that's not so? I think the deputy clerk misunderstood the proposal. It's not what I understood it to be. Because that contradicts the previous council resolution. Of the well, not me. Well, we, we, we resolve to review it annually, and that's what we're doing. The second thing is, therefore, that means that um, uh, during um, during uh, Merchant Navy Day, then. Um, the red ensign, which is flown from, no, sorry, I've got that mistake. Made a mistake there. Um, I personally can I say to you, uh, personally can I say to you, I think that's a big massive backward step because we've just talked about the history of this with, with, with our community. And so 
Okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're sorry we're offended. We find the way we're actually going to substantially reduce the amount of display during the year of, of, um, of your flags. That's potentially what it could say. Now, you could come back to me and say, well, we can apply for it. So at some point, we're going to have to sit around the table, according to this, and discuss whether we let them have multiple flags or not. And so this is going to come up again. Now, we can have that discussion, and that is fine. But as it stands, personally, I don't want to vote for an amendment that undermines what is established already for 2024 on that little list. That's the first thing I want to say. Uh, the second thing I want to say is um, Amanda Payne gave her apologies. She just couldn't come, but of course, previous man. Uh, and, and she wanted to pass on a little bit of information. So I, I said I would pass this on. Um, and when I was mayor, I consulted with the inclusivity department of the RBL organisation. The individuals I spoke with had their own personal experiences within the forces, within their own LGBTQ plus journeys. They were very supportive of flying the pride flag from the same flag pole in that location, saying that military bases up and down the country fly them together, proving there's nothing inappropriate or disrespectful um, about the pride flag, in particular, that will find it underneath the union flag. They did, however, say that as certain individuals, they would expect any other accompanying flag to be removed for special occasions, allowing personnel to salute solely with the union jack. Uh, and that's not coming from a point of discrimination in any way, um, as, as any secondary flag should be removed. And I felt it, that was good and fair instruction, and that's what we all did at the time. Uh, and so that is a position that she wanted, she felt that we should reaffirm. It was a sensible position made by this council. It was unfortunate that we ended up in a situation where we ended up apologising for what was I think. Do you think thing. we should get ready to apologise again when we do exactly the same exactly. thing? Um, is, that the, is that the final yeah. paragraph? We know we. No, yeah. no, I have to say to you, I have to say to you personally, yeah. uh, I admire Councillor Sullivan for voting against because actually on that day I, I, I abstained and I think I should have voted against yeah. because I didn't see why we should apologise. That was my personal mm. view. Um, and, and as Peter said on the day, you, you're going to offend everybody at some point. Um, and, and yeah, but that's not a track I want to go down. Yeah. But if it occurs again, that's the thing that we do, and we robustly defend uh, a perfectly sensible solution. So that that was my second thing. My third thing has nothing to do with the prior thing. It's, it's simply a question. The previous document mentioned the flying of the Ukraine flag. This document doesn't. Has that position changed? Because I told you it was going to take the council resolution to look at that. I didn't like the document. I, I, I've already, I'm already questioning the document's accuracy. I don't see the going to be so. I, I can't answer the question, I'm afraid. Okay. And the person that wrote it isn't here. Can we just? I know you've been very generous. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, there's people that haven't spoken to it, make it very quick. I was, uh, my proposal that children would be reserved for the flag centurion and given the flag only uh, is not, I, I had no problem with the pride flag or flying there last year. But what I do have a problem with it is setting up again a confrontation where the pride flag has to be removed. That was not anticipated, and I, I, I fully appreciate the decision of the council was made in good faith, but we we don't want to, to repeat. We, we're, we're proposing that this happens on three occasions this June. Yes. We're going to have set up three potential co uh, days of conflict, and I think we, we need to avoid that. If, if it could you know, like I said, I didn't have a, a no problem with the flag flag, flag from it, flag, it's the confrontation that it caused in my opinion. Yeah, sure. I, I, I think, okay. I would, thanks, I would just come back on the Amanda thing. When we discussed the apology and I asked, 
you know, what was it that caused the upset? Because obviously I was the one taking all the flat, along with the entire town being the train was backwards and homophobic in the press, which upset a lot of people. And the answer I was given, it was not that they didn't have four flags, because I said, why were they upset? They still have three flags and a rainbow of lights on the castle. I, I genuinely couldn't understand why they were upset. And the answer I was given by Amanda, who spoke to all of those organisations, was it was the act of taking the flag down that caused the offence. We are now proposing to do it three times, as Councillor O'Sullivan has pointed. So we are saying to the people, we apologise to you. Thanks, we're sorry, we're going to triple it. Can anyone justify that? Because I'm not taking the flat this time. And I'm not apologising. If, if, if that's what you vote for, fine, we'll go with it. And you go out there and say, yeah, we have said it once last year, we've done it three times this year. That's what I said about just yeah. polls where people are hiring. And that's, that's where it is. Simple, you know, we, we took that as genuine upset. Money. It was brought to us. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. um, Katie spoke eloquently about the fact that the protests were not representative of power, and I've spoken to several other members of the community to say the same thing were embarrassed by it. But we apologize. And we're, we're going to show those people that we learned our lesson by doing that full time to seven to one. I, I just cannot square that in my head. Um, Jackie, and then Ethan, because you haven't spoke, and then we'll go to the top. You did a minute ago. Yeah. yeah. In what? In what? You were in the fan, Peter. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to Ethan first, and Ethan has spoken, and then we do need to get somebody to revert. Uh, yeah. um, yeah, I hadn't formulated what to say, um, and I feel quite nervous because it's um, this is a, a sensitive subject. Um, it's a subject that I think represents either a, a threat or an opportunity in some respects because um, because of the sensitivity of the nature of of the subject of um, identification with certain flags and, and non-identification with others. Um, I think I've, I've reflected on this quite a lot and I'd like us to, to think of ways that we can see this. I mean, we, we've made mistakes, mistakes have been made, um, but we're coming <laughs> to the situation from a completely different place than where we were. Um, I'm very grateful to yourself for, for attending and um, uh, that's been really helpful for me to understand. Um, I think this can be an opportunity for community building. I think ultimately that's that in many respects is, is the purpose of, of the council, is to, to bring to people together rather than to divide them. Um, though I understand we're not all going to agree and see eye to eye all the time. Um, for me, I mean, I, I voted for, for the, the Pride flag to fly and for it to fly at Shoulder Hill. Um, Though I also understand that that there is a, a great significance to Shoulder Hill for the military community and the veterans community. Um, I I personally don't think the uh, the the proposal from C and D necessarily resolves the issue. I think it changes the situation, but doesn't resolve the issue personally, that's my personal view. Um, I think as, as Simon said, there's some consideration to be given in future to the status of, of Shelby Hill in terms of, um, well, the status of, of that flagpole. Um, and I think we can do, I think we can do more to, um, to understand the community's perspective on that. Um, 
personally, I, th I think the document as it was, was a good document. Um, I would like to see the Elizabeth mask included in the document. Um, though I'd also like us to, to <coughs> consider what Simon said around the, um, the status of Shelby Hill. Okay, so um, Simon and Kelly, I'm not sure who was first, so you could. Well, <clears throat> I just feel we're maybe in a situation where we're, we need to review, continue to review the policy, I'm afraid. I don't like saying it, it's nice to get these things done. But what we're supposed to be doing here is accepting a recommendation. The recommendation is not, well, the recommendation is clear enough, but the document it leaves behind is not. Um, and so, I'm on the brink of proposing that we don't accept that recommendation and we come back another time, send it back to CND or the next appropriate committee. Um, yeah, a couple of things. So I was sort of going to say similar is that I, the way I read the document was <laughs> like this, you know, point three was exactly where the flags were going to be flown throughout the year. And that was as well as this extra bit in red at the top. So now it, it's, it's, it's confusing. It feels like it needs more. Like, I don't think anybody else has got any more that they can say, but I feel like this document is confusing. Like, what are we, what are we, you know, is, well, it, is it the red bit? Is it the rest of the document? The, yeah, the, the document I've got in front of me, for example, says January or you know, June, for example, there will be three five flags up with an amendment that they can request a flag. But if anybody can request a flag to be flown from any poll, so technically, I could request to have a flag on the board top. My understanding of the amendment, and you made it, was that the amendment would make the policy that there would only be one flag per organisation at any one time unless there were extenuating circumstances in the really fly the Sean help me out with the name of the flag here. Gilbert Baker. Gilbert Baker flag for history month from the castle because it's our history and heritage centre whilst also having a kind of flag on another pole because it's right history month or whatever. That was how I understood it, but I don't know. Well, yeah, right. go for it. You made the proposal. Okay, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's there's a nuance here that hasn't been revealed in this um, debate. Uh, and the nuance is that is, is in the words. Uh, you can read it. The full council adopt the flag policy as presented. Yes. With the additional principle that any group slash organisation can request a flyer flag from any one flagpole and may under extenuating circumstances apply to further flags to be flown from more than one flagpole. Right, okay, so the point here, it was to try to avoid an escalation of applicants for different flags and then to claim precedent of previous activity. So the underlying point is that any organisation that comes to us can ask for one flag call. If they say they want two or three, they can ask, but it has to be a full council decision. The whole point we haven't addressed here is that the council is not an independent organisation. We can choose to fly whatever we want from any of our flag poles at any time. So this additional amendment does work with the policy. I know it's probably not what you understood you were voting for. Um, it, it, what it doesn't do, it doesn't give us a get out of jail free card in response to taking the pride flag down to no. replace it with the union flag. Um, but I did offer a pragmatic solution informally, and I'm not sure whether to say that now, because it hasn't really been thought through that well, but I will. Um, and I understand that flags often are put up in the morning and taken down in the evening. Now, to avoid this taking down of a flag to replace it with another one, and I'm not suggesting that we do that every day of the year, but where there are friction points, as perhaps we may have in June, that perhaps we say for the month of June, every day we will put appropriate flag up on day one and take it down at the end of day one, put the appropriate flag up on day two, which may be different, 
take it down at the end of day two. So we're not um, causing the perceived or danger of offence by taking down a flag that's been flying for two weeks to replace it with another one. It was just an idea. Happy to hear anybody's thoughts. No, Kevin maintained. Right. Um, I think we could keep this to death for another couple yeah. of years and we wouldn't get anywhere. Bottom line is childhood. We can we can talk about anything else, we can wrap it up in whatever words we want, but it's shoulder here when it's the month of June. Now, having completely agreed with everything Steve said about the principle, and, and I've said the same thing at CMD, I said exactly you did it more eloquently. The principle of sharing the pole between the two flags is fine. And 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 Pete's idea of bringing it down at twilight. Maybe a little ruse to get around some of the grief. But if we do the hokey pokey with the flags on Shoulder Hill this coming June, we are setting ourselves up for a kicking like we had this year. Now, having reflected on the matter, I think the pragmatist in me wins out over the principle. So, whatever form of words we need to construct tonight, I think tonight's. The night where we decide what goes up on Shoulder Hill in June. And if the consensus opinion around the table is we will put flags up, take flags down, put flags up, take flags down, fine. We'll have to be prepared for potentially the absolute mess that we had last year. Okay, can I to offer a solution to that? the document in front of me which I'm reading. If we go to on, on page three, is it part three? If we change the wording of June to during five months, the town council will fly appropriate flags from its flagpoles and remove specifically naming which flagpoles they are, we can then choose to fly appropriate flags from our flagpoles. And we are not committing ourselves to putting three pride flags up one of them on Shoulder Hill. And then we don't need to change the document any more than removing about seven words. And we'll, then we pick as amendment that an organization can request one flag on one pole. We will put a pride flag up somewhere. And because it's Pride Month, we could arguably say that that's an extenuating circumstance and we'll put the paper plate of one up on the castle like we did it for Pride History Month giving them two flags, thus leaving the Shoulder Hill flag for the British flag other than St. Perrin on Androtica. Is that In right? fact, I'm going to post. I'll second it. So for clarification, does that mean that there's only the flag of St. Perrin or the Union flag from Shoulder Hill? Oh, no, I, I, I can't think of any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because that, that was what I was talking about. Yeah, well, yeah, I haven't specified that. I've, I've, I've removed where it says right appropriate flags, promise flag poles, shoulder hill, park house centre, and castle. We just removed specifically naming those flag poles. So the policy for June becomes during Pride Month, the town council will fly appropriate flags on its flag poles. The only thing I was going to suggest, but possibly propose even, was that, that you know, it's now the first of. February, and already the, the policy said that the, the flag flag should be flown already from the castle. Yeah, we can do it because we haven't resolved it. Exactly. So, 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 perhaps <laughs> the spotting. Yeah. yeah. So, so, as, as I, I agree, actually agree with Simon that perhaps a, a bit, even though this issue has been discussed an, an awful lot, it <coughs> could be agree <laughs> February and March and do a bit. More consideration for June uh, uh, defer a decision. I'm just thinking of a political agenda and uh, meetings and the view from the partnership. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's taking an extraordinary meeting at the moment. Um, you, yeah. you, you say you seconded my proposal. Yeah. Right. Who had their hand up before the seconding came in? I think you did, Katie. So we'll take your comment and then we'll vote. So just to be clear, <laughs> this document is the, the red bit is the new part, and the rest is that. Well, the red the paragraph at the top. Right. And the rest that we're getting confused about 
is that that's what we as a council are choosing to do. The rest is about other organisations can contact us and they can have a flagpole. Like this is is what we intend to do. Is is that you know during sure. Pride there'll be more than one Pride flag. And I and I don't I, I hate that I'm saying this because yeah you know the Pride flag does have some meaning to me obviously, but all the other events only get one flag. Which is yeah, and Pride gets on D Day more. There's more uh, there are two flagpoles now, uh, shoulder, shoulder Hill and the Swiss Map. It's the 80th. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm not objecting to that. I'm just saying that's just I'm just saying those two flagpoles. So why can't we name the flagpoles on for the June one? <laughs> but there's what I'm saying because is they've there's named more. three, and some of us don't think that repeating the same mistakes of this year is a wise idea. So I'm trying to avoid it. There, there is an actual an implication in what we voted for that we're not going to build up and show the hill. Exactly, because we did it last year right. and they called it made yeah. it international okay. news that the entire population in this town being betrayed as homophobic. Yeah, I, I heard you the first time, Chair. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I take a different position. That's fine, but that's, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I, I don't there's, there's no conflict, really, with uh, all the other flag poles other than Shaw Hill. Yeah, Shaw Hill is a trash point, and I think we need to be clear. I don't, not. I hope it, you know that it is clear because I, I'm not in favour of something that is all oh, well open to interpretation about about um, what flag does or doesn't. <coughs> I, I think we need to be absolutely clear. All right. So, how do you want to wear it? Yeah, the the that shoulder hill is is um, is uh, we will only fly the the flag of the or the Union flag on appropriate occasions. <sighs> Mr. Chairman, that, that would be an amendment to the proposal on the table. I was going to say, discuss this for me. I would like to move to take the vote as, as I would like to say. What's the proposal? <laughs> 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 what are you going to the, the proposal as, as stands would be that, in effect, we take Shoulder Hill out of the uh, equation for Pride Month. So the Pride flag would not be flown from Shoulder Hill. Yeah. Not as a disrespect to the LGBTQ plus community, but simply as a matter of practicality and to prevent potential clashes. And I'll say that was not the actual proposal from the chair. The proposal from the chair was that we we accept <coughs> with the removal of at Shoulder Hill, the Park House Centre, and the chasm. Mm -hmm. It has subsequently been revealed through debate what that actually meant was what you are saying. Um, but that's not what the proposal was as was seconded. So if you want to vote on something. That's what we're voting on, in the understanding that implicitly it's saying we are not going to uh, fly the pride. Well, it would give us the yeah. option to choose what the appropriate flag poles are. Yeah, it's, uh, you, I didn't fully think through the question you asked me. I'm not saying that this would commit us to doing exactly what you said. If, if you take it as written during five months of town council to fly appropriate flag poles from flag from flag poles with the addendum of features proposal that organisations can request that we fly a flag from a flagpole, and I then gave the example that we could fly the fly flag from one pole, the Gilbert Baker flag from the castle, which would give pride two flags in, in, in the month. Yes, you know, it's not specifying specifically, it says we will be able to choose to fly appropriate flags from the flagpoles. So, so to be clear, you are actually not suggesting that we get Right. I'm not suggesting that we fly it or not. I'm saying that we would literally what is written during Pride Month, the town council will fly appropriate flags from its flagpoles. It does not specify what appropriate flags are. It does not specify which flagpoles are which. Thank you. 
So we would have the ability okay. to choose a flag per poll. Thank you, Chair. I, I think it's what well, that, that's how I intended it. It was not meant to commit us to any specific course of action, but that one organization, you know, could have one flag per request the flag for poll, and we might agree to two in extenuating circumstances. Can I ask for clarification then? Who's actually going to decide which of the Well, that was in the paper as school council. So I was doing this batch every month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Katie, go on. Um, if, if you could make that amendment that you, you miss out specific flags that are going to be used for Pride Month. Can I suggest that you just don't name any flag for anybody? Right. It's not going to do it. Just yeah. say, look, that's if you, you know, these are specific dates in the year that us as a town are going to celebrate. We will put a flag up on what poll we think is necessary or, you know, most appropriate at the time. But let's not just take away those flags for for Pride Month and just say, okay, look cover our back, let's not name flags, because actually we might want to take that one down and then I'm going to be happy about it. Let, let's just say, look, if you want, if you're an organisation and you want to flag up, you need to contact us and, you know, we'll make a decision. All these other dates in the year that are important, we will make a decision about what flag goes where. Let's just get rid of all individual flags. And if we're going to have to have this discussion every single month about what flag goes up where for what event, then we may as well just do it. Just chuck it in to the agenda for every month. We'll have a nice little chat we'll about flags. And we won't and we'll stay upsetting anybody <laughs> at any time. That's my proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Probably one of the few people that has had more discussions about flag sensitivity than many. And this policy, as it sounds, is an absolute mess, especially with the additional amendment. And I can't go through it as it sounds because I don't understand it. Even with the clarification points multiple times around the table, if I don't understand it, how do members of the public understand it? If we vote for this, there will be significant. Backlash, I can imagine right. whether that's liked or not, because people don't understand it. It needs to be clear. It needs to be crystal clear when, what, where. This isn't to me now, and I want to. I mean, I, I'm quite happy with folks maybe. if we just take all our flagpoles down, but okay. it's solved the <laughs> problem once and for all. In yeah, fact, if they were made of wood, I'd be trying to find bloody termites <laughs> online, but. We need to, like, yeah, basically, this, mm -hmm. this isn't, like, good enough to go out to the public because it no. makes no sense. Well, I'm what sorry, we, it really doesn't. What we did last year yeah. wasn't good enough. It caused, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, we, 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 we've we opened the can of work. I think I told you this, Sean. I went to a, you know, and few pride, we, we thought we were going to lead the way, and that was our intention. We did everything with the best of intentions. I've no doubt about that. But I went to a, a mayor's event, and it was everybody from Barnstable across, which is like a like camp and down around from Bodmin, Waybridge, so North Cornwall, West Devon. Every mayor's there, or give or take a few. There was two flags, two, two councils had flags up for Pride Month in that area. Barnstable, a fair sized place, had one flag pole. We have four, and we took the most almighty kicking in the world. And all anybody wanted to ask me was, what the hell went on for you? So I told them, we took the flag down for D-Day because we thought everybody would be, you know, be okay with it. And most of the comments I got from the parish councils that were looking at us were going, yeah, we were thinking about it. We're not doing that. We're never going to put ourselves in that position. And that is unfortunately the fallout of what we achieved this year. We didn't build community cohesion. We ripped <laughs> the town apart. We angered everybody. <laughs> the story, the way they were portrayed, the idea that you, the people of you weren't ready for pride can be demonstrated as being wrong because the first year, 
everything was supported. Everybody was happy. Everybody went with it. And then all hell went loose this year because we took the price down. And, you know, the aims, the intentions, the, what we tried to achieve was so genuine. I've no doubt about that. Everybody voted genuinely. You know, maybe some of us, myself included, didn't think it through enough or didn't word it well enough for others to understand our points. But we, we created, well, we didn't actually, the people that caused the media to put the creative, the, the, the vision, the media said it. I'm not picking on you, by the way, you didn't buy anything. Um, but ultimately, we scared a lot of local parish councils in this area away from ever attempting to follow us. So, you know, we're not going to do that again. And yeah, you're right. We're an hour in now and we're nowhere near. You know, I. Can I check Yeah, Jackie, Simon. You go all in very quick. What? Yeah, yeah go for it, yeah. Um, I did, didn't put my hand up again because you did ask for any people that had put their hand up <laughs> before the uh, before the vote. Yeah, so no. I don't know if anyone's spoken. So, um, I just think it's it's just going back to basics. It's monumentally sad that what we started as the intention of what what we started was with was was to celebrate and to. Acknowledge inclusivity, and I just think it's really sad that it's come to this. Well, it has, but it was hijacked. Sorry, it was hijacked. Well, but we nice to get back to, to yeah. that principle <laughs> that it's about in, in, inclusivity. Um, but I think the policy should be about clarification, and I just think this policy isn't about clarification. It's not going to make our lives any easier in its current format, and I think we're actually, no. we should we should be taking it back to a committee and it should be really clear. So I know we've probably got a vote at the point of principle on the on procedure on the, the vote that the second did. Proposal. proposal that the second did. Yeah. You, you agree to remove it? You were yeah. thinking, all right, I'll remove that proposal and propose that we move this into a committee. <laughs> and we can do this down sort of again. Re rewrite the policy. Rewrite the policy yeah. into short, sweet, simple yes. terms that everybody, including the community, can understand. Can I, can I propose that, Joe, that we agree the February and March both part of the protocol, because we're now already in February. And that's going out to be hitting us as now, because it's an appropriate plan from the Council of Black Power. Okay. I can put that we move this into an appropriate committee and put up the LGBT history, uh, sorry, the Gilbert Baker flag from the castle, because that is our history and heritage centre for the duration of the vote. And we're happy with the March proposal. St. Karen's flag will be flown I'm always happy to see St. Karen's flag. But if we can move it forward yeah. so that. Yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll move the rest of it into a committee, but February and March as written stand. Agreement to address the recommendations. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Simon? Yeah, just, just a quick one. Um, I don't think there was a lot of flack and fallout last year. Doesn't necessarily mean we did the wrong thing. I think we've heard tonight and in discussions that actually that the solution we're proposing, we Shoulder Hill, is acceptable to Steve and his colleagues. And and maybe the thing that we would do this year that we didn't do last year because we haven't had that positive, as much positive interaction with both, you know, well, with the entire community, would be instead of apologizing, go the extra mile to with their help communicate what they've communicated to us. They've changed a lot of our views I think this in the intervening year by communicating so brilliantly how they feel and if we we can only try again to communicate that again well we didn't really do that last year we can now this year we can communicate that if we still have flat so be it but we we can't do what we don't think is the right thing just because we get flat we just try to communicate it better absolutely and then I'll second it Jackie already seconded, and you also, right. to be clear, what we will vote on is moving the rest of the flag policy into a committee 
February, where we will fly the Gilbert Baker flag on the castle. And March, when St. Perrin's flag will be flown from Shower Hill. Mr. Jennings has been signaling for ages that he might have something amazing that might change the way to get the vote. Mr. Jennings will refer to the Pride community with Tamar and I will be happy with. On the understanding of the point you, go on. You fly the flag. Like last year, you will have more trouble than you've ever imagined. Which flag are we on about now? You put that flag up by the war memorial. You don't realise right. the depth of feeling that a lot I, of people I, in June have got. Darky, my kids ended up being bullied in school this year because of what happened. That's right. Um, and, I've got the stories around the media, so I've got a pretty good idea. There was a lot of ill feeling last year about that flag, I and it's know. not gone away. It wasn't them that bullied my kids. But yes, I, I do have some understanding of this. It will yeah. not go away, I promise the Lord. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, back to my proposal, because everybody still know what it is. Yeah, this must be rewritten by the BBC mm -hmm. and affixed with the exception of Thomas. Uh, with the exception of February and March. Uh, yeah, okay. Or in Does, do we need to specify this? We haven't made it. 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 June is the problem month. Um, we don't know what to do with it. So we're going to kick it into a committee where some of us will have to go to towards it. Um, would, you, would you like to try and create a treat? If the train could attend, that would be fantastic. Why not? Obviously, any of you are welcome. Okay. So if Ian's happy to email then I'll sort that out very quick. The important thing I think everybody needs to remember is we are all genuinely trying to do our best to solve a situation that is a microcosm of what's going on in border society. And you know, the best of intentions, you know. Yeah. No, you won't. That, that, that is, it, it, in essence, what the, the problem is. is. We can't please everybody, and the people we didn't please last year for the one help. Uh, as for positive, um, positive speaking tonight about um, yeah. um, understanding stuff now. So. Uh, do I get the impression that you gentlemen are not staying for the rest of the night? <laughs> 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 right, that's a short point. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for Okay, um, we still got to adopt the whistleblowing policy. Second, all in favor. Whistleblowing policy. We're at the vote stage and it's gone through. So, you know, <laughs> fine. Abstain. We're against all that. Abstain. No, that's all. The full council adopt the equal opportunity policy. Both of we do. Uh, all in favour? I think that's unanimous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> to approve recommendation to migrate to a new IT provider. Words, I have a few words to say, don't worry, we'll be brief, because um, I don't have a full report in front of, uh, in front of you. Um, this was prompted by the difficulties that we've been, ha we've been having in the last few months with the current provider. Um, we've had a lot of outages um, and various, various difficulties. 
um, and which has been quite exasperating. This has quite an impact on our ability to work efficiently. Um, and so we have been considering looking at alternatives. Our equipment is quite old as well. We've got a creaky old server, so it's time that we went into the cloud. Um, but the question is who to do that with, because there are several good IT providers out there. Um, it would be it would be better to have a local provider, our current one is based in Exeter, um, and there are others much closer at home who, um, who I've been speaking to. So I've actually had quite, some quite lengthy conversations with at least three companies, and actually other officers have been involved in that as well. And so I've been kind of really trying to get to the, to the crux of exactly what equipment we need and um, like the forecasting and things and be able to compare and contrast and put all that information in front of you. But I haven't finished that exercise yet. It's quite a chunk of work. And I think I need some help also from some of the other officers um, who are involved in the conversations. Are you so we defer I am um, proposing that we defer this, but we'll come, I want to let you know it will come before you okay. uh, in the next month or so. Okay. I propose we defer that. Just a second again. Okay. Unanimous. Um, where are we? To note the Q4 three position approve any movements of council reserves. Which one do buddy have any queries on this? On the first um, page of all council Q3 budgets, um, there's a, a variance to date on expenditure terms of 605,000. Um, so, so my reading of that is that we've spent 685,000 more than we would have anticipated spending at this point. Um, I can see in the corporate services, the first page, all the council will be I can see in the corporate services Q3 budget report, which is the second page, that there's under point expenditure of 332,380. Uh, but without, you know, without kind of uh, income. In terms of compass points expenditure. So, I suppose my, my question is really is that 685,000 variance? Is that in large part explained by compass points income? And is there anything else that you need to tell us about that 685,000? Or can we seek some in our office? No, that figures I don't know. We don't have the RFO with us to explain those figures. So, um, yeah. 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 Well, well, I mean, I, I think it's really important that members have a really good understanding of um, of the, the budget and how it's progressing throughout the year. And, and so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would like to take this maybe again to to CMD to look at with the proper report and um, potentially with the RFO present as well because no, I'd, I'd like to know mm, that detail as well. What I'd like to ask but also, we have like an overarching report? Yes, it, rather than going into yes. suggestions yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, and if we, can, if we can try to flag these kind of queries beforehand. I know that actually MRO has only just managed to get this finalised in the last day or so. Um, but um, yeah, but I think going forward, we need better reporting. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, do you want to make I mean, the because you're asking for it? I don't want to accept these if we're not. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a concern, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. okay. So, so that we move into the CD with a further report. report. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that. All in favour? Abstain, abstain, abstain. Abstain. To approve the finance report to schedule a payment made between the 11th of Jan 24 and the 1st of Feb 24. Anyone got any queries? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, in that case, I suppose that we do it. Seconded. Yeah, I'll all in favour. Against. Abstain. Okay, schedule of payments we made on the 2nd of February 24. Anyone got any queries? Uh, seconded. All in favour? Against. Abstain. Cool. Ah, this bit again. Come on, we need some hands to go in the air here. To so appoint members of the following committee, corporate and democratic services, people abroad, I propose to cancel the abroad. What do you no. I wish to propose Councillor Mort. I'll second that, if he's willing to go. I am willing to. Because I've missed the French lady because of IT issues. If you're not on a, if you're not on a committee, you're not on a committee at all. Okay. All right. Um, all in favour of Councillor Moore? Against? Abstain. Okay, that went through. Um, planning, this is the one where we're struggling. We really need to keep a step in. I'm on this committee and my attendance levels are bad because it runs at the time where I was. Borderline kitchen work. So the two from the planning committee, please. Yeah. But is uh, that hand uh, to uh, uh, No, but I was going to, if I'm yeah, going to, yes. I was going to make a, a general point about um, committees. It's bearing in mind the struggle to get a quarter of the last CND committee, and I think it's fair to say the planning committee regularly struggles with the issue of quality. Um, I did suggest previously that the um, that substitutes be used, that a facility for substitutes. Exactly what I've got in terms of the, C, the last C and D meeting. There was a couple of um, non-members, non-voting members present, and if it does, uh, if they can can be substitution for somebody who's not in attendance, it may, means that meeting will be quartered from it, otherwise it wouldn't be. But if that's not the issue now. Oh, sir, so I think you just put yourself on this committee, Tom. Well, I, I, I do attend, I, I, I did. Uh, I, mean, I, 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 I take your point, it's a good point, but yeah, we, we do. It's not, I, I, I know, but it, it's in an appropriate moment to, to, yeah. to make. Uh, it, I'm not putting myself kind of fault for the planning committee at the moment because I did you know, the long answer and the short answer. I, I, I don't just, know, yeah, maybe. This, there, I think that there would you know, we're all committees were abolished and then reformed other than the planning committee. And I think the planning committee needs to be uh, it should it shouldn't be taken personal to suggest that the planning committee might need to be looked at as well. Okay. So at the moment, I'm happy to, I have to do it right. on a probably more so than you said. You're, 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 that was you saying that you suggested a substitute system, you attend the meeting, you won't join the committee, and wouldn't step in as a substitute either. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that personal. I know, 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 I would anybody like to shut down and propose funding for the committee? No. <laughs> Come on, we need a couple of people on planning, please. Yeah. I know you are, so am I. Sometimes. In the interest of the one cooperative, I will, in that case, I will put my name forward. I propose to throw some of them. All in favour? Against? Abstain. Who's going to do that? <laughs> To agree a response to the pro proposed diversion of Bridalway 11. Does anybody want to kick this off? Um, right, and I know, I know the proposal of change. I've written parts of these driveways. I've never written the bit that they're proposing to abolish. 
because of the fact it was reconstructed by the landowner. Now the landowner is now proposing the trip to be moved, and it looks perfectly logical where they're proposing to move it to, but if you actually look on the map, near where they're proposing to move it to, it says well. And it, they're proposing to move it to an area of land that is extremely boggy. Whereas the land that it goes across at the moment is uphill. And yes, we'll get a bit muddy in winter because that's the nature of land going to get. But where they're proposing to move it to, yeah, will end up impossible. That is my concern with it. We have too few bridleways as it is in this area. There's a huge campaign at the moment regarding riders and deaths of horses, deaths of riders, deaths of horses on the roads. We need to maintain our bridleways and we need to make sure that the ones that we have are usable. What's my comments on it? Okay. I pers personally wouldn't be in favour of it. Because as it says, well. Fair enough, it's a reasonable point. Uh, um, anybody else? I think there's a reason to be here, so just so I don't have to be honest. I was going to say, oh, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're proposing to replace the bridge over the rods at Rods Bridge. They're not proposing for cars to go through the canal. That's the only, that would be my say on it. I, I totally agree with the landowner and he's wanting their privacy because it does run right through their property. But a lot of bridleways run through their property. And the only reason people have never been able to use it before was because it was obstructed. It took Cornwall County Council and a particular person in this area, Persistent, and the British Horse Society to reinstate, get that bridleway reinstated. Unfortunately, it goes through the, the owner's property. If you buy a property, you buy it looking at what you're getting, not what you want to change with regards to public rights away, I feel. Well, just, just to reiterate on the point of principle, really, if, if a landowner has taken a mickey for a significant period of time, and then a path, whether it's a driveway or a footpath, has been re-established. I think we should support the re-establishment rather than any attempt to, to kind of get out of jail by moving. Anybody else? I was going to say it does result in that loss of some public accessible space. You know, the, the, the bit between D and C, really. Not, not the, but that's the net loss. I know the D does, but that's the loss. Yeah, they're, they're taking away that bit, which was fenced in specifically, because the big issue with it was that the bridleway that we, you couldn't use, and the reason you couldn't use it was because it went through their fields, and they always put horses in those fields, and you do not ride through a field with loose horses in it, because you are putting yourself in danger. Riding on the moors, you put yourself in danger. <laughs> I've been chased by federal ponies on the moor. On horseback, and luckily I've been on them fast enough for us to run, outrun them. It's yeah. no fun. Whilst I was emphasised with the with the privacy aspect and so on, I do think, as has been said, that you know people purchase properties that have got public rights away through them, whether it's wide or footpath, that they're there historically and should be deemed in front of the level rather than removed. <laughs> From the history point of view, a lot of these old bridleways were the, the old sand routes. Yeah. Where the sand was brought mm. in land. Right, so do you have a proposal for the information? Um, I presume I propose that we don't accept the diversion. Second that. Okay. Everybody know what we're going to vote on? Um, I think we're I think Cornwall Council are looking for a response, aren't they? Yeah. 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 All that yeah. Is that objects the proposal to attention objects or the proposal should be yeah. the objects to the proposal? Yeah. If 
and if we can back it up with the fact that the proposed new route is through unsuitable land. Yeah. Because what will probably happen is that the current driveway will get blocked off and school county council aren't very good at putting in footpaths. And they would just end up back in the situation that it was previously. There's been an awful lot of work in this area getting old rights way re-established. Yeah. <clears throat> no. Objection. Um, inappropriate, inappropriate land and because it's wet. Yeah. And it would be extremely difficult for County Council to maintain its rightful standard. Yeah, okay. Useful standard. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Right, is everybody happy with that? Yeah, okay, all in favour. Cool. Proceed updates from lead counter councillors on community activities and outside bodies. Well, I've already given my update on town team, so does anybody else have anything they'd like to share with? Okay, we'll go to Rain and then Vicky. I'll be quick. Um, this isn't uh, necessarily a council thing, but I would like the council to consider getting involved. No, it doesn't involve money, so just to get that out there. Or time, it's mine. Um, as you all probably know, I work for a charity that deals with learning disabilities. I've been working a lot recently with activities. There's a new charity um, that's been formed called the B Team that is an uh, accessible social club. Um, we've so far done an accessible disco, an accessible bowling. It's been um, very well received, incredibly well actually. Um, and we are currently doing um, something every month. Um, and it just would be nice to know if the council would support this and maybe anyone fancies coming at any point would be nice. Uh, but there's lots going on um within that at the moment so and um, as they although it's not the council it'd be nice for the council to be aware of it yeah. thank you all yeah okay, cool. uh, right, right i'll try and keep it quick, quick as possible um this year eighty celebration gig etc i know that there's things being planned by from the communications that we've had um is I presume the council are going to support the proclamation to do with the the day celebrations. And is there any chance of any sort of beacon? I did say in fact that I would have thought a beacon with all the pollution aspects and that could have been could be very difficult. Um, but a way perhaps like lighting up the castle, I don't know. The, the was mentioned now that we have Pampas Point Storm Tower of lighting that. Which would be obviously very visible. Yeah. 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 That's. I can't remember how, quite how far we've got, but I think the idea was. Yeah, it, it was. I think pretty much a resolution of the. It was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that we're going to acquire the lighting so the compass point can be illuminated on high days and holidays. Okay. Excellent. Anybody else got anything to? No, in that case, we'll see you correspondence on the slide. Is that doing the next meeting, Thursday, 7th of March, 2024. Okay. Okay. We'll end it. The results to exclude the press and public due to the confidential and special nature of the business to be transacted. I propose we do that. Second. Or in favour. Okay. Gonna have to ask you all to leave now, please, gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Oh, okay.